The E series is one of the most important aspects of learning chicken genetics, as the alleles on the E locus are responsible for the base patterns on all the varieties that we know today. Essentially, they provide the foundation for every variety. The genetics of the alleles that make up the E series are perhaps one of the most difficult concepts for chicken breeders when trying to understand genetics. The alleles on the E series provide the base for every variety that we know today and oftentimes the most challenging part of introducing a new variety into a breed is the difficulties that occur with crossing two different E alleles together. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the E series, the E series alleles are located on the E locus and are responsible for the distribution of the black and red pigments on a chicken. These alleles determine which cells in which areas will produce red or black pigment. For those of you that are familiar with the agouti locus in goats, cattle, horses, mice, dogs, or any other animals that have one, it may help to know that the E locus is pretty much the agouti locus for chickens. As of 2023, there are five known E alleles, each with their own gene symbol and name, and you've probably already heard of a lot of them before. These alleles are called duckwing, wheaton, partridge, extended black, and birchin. In this video, I will be going over each one of them, what they look like phenotypically in males, females, and chicks, the differences between them, their gene symbols, and some popular varieties made on each of them. It might sound crazy at first, but if you think about it, the only two colors on a chicken are black and red. Every other gene either dilutes or enhances black, red, or both. The black on chickens is referred to as eumelanin, and the red is referred to as femelanin. To give an example of this, the silver gene dilutes only femelanin and turns it into a straw color when heterozygous and when hemizygous or homozygous, because it is sex-linked, turns the gold into silver. Another dilution gene, the blue gene, in one copy, dilutes only eumelanin into a shade of gray. And another dilution gene, the lavender gene, in two copies, dilutes both femelanin and eumelanin into straw-like and lavender shades. The only time you do not see eumelanin or femelanin is when a bird is white, which is the absence of color, hence why you don't see black or red. Otherwise, every other gene enhances, dilutes, or changes the distribution of the black and red. And with that, let's move on to the different phenotypes and genetics of the different E alleles. As stated earlier, the E alleles control the distribution of black and red on chickens. However, phenotypically, these differences are best noted in females as opposed to males. Each E allele expresses very differently on females, while in males, three E alleles, duckwing, wheaton, and partridge, look nearly identical. The general accepted order of dominance for the E alleles is considered to start with extended black, followed by birchin, then duckwing, wheaton, and lastly partridge, although there is an exception with wheaton and duckwing that I will cover later in the video. Although there is technically an order of dominance, one of the hardest parts about understanding the E-series is that the patterns don't always completely cover each other. Some interact by simple dominance, some interact by incomplete dominance, but overall, crossing the patterns will usually result in loads of leakage, creating a genetic mess. The first pattern we will cover is what is considered the most dominant, extended black. The gene symbol for extended black is a capital E, and what this allele does is extends black over all of the feathers inhibiting red. Now, in theory, an extended black chicken should be entirely black. However, without additional black enhancers, males tend to get leakage around their neck. One example of a black enhancer is ML melanotic. Leakage occurs when black does not fully inhibit femelanin or the red pigment. But do keep in mind that if the red pigment is diluted to silver, it could be white instead. Now, we didn't mention this earlier, but there's actually another type of red pigment, referred to as autosomal red, and this is not affected by silver. So if you're seeing red leakage on a silver-based bird, this is autosomal red instead. It seems like autosomal red is controlled by the various E alleles, just like eumelanin and femelanin are, but there hasn't been a lot of research done on it, so I'll save that topic for another video. The science of leakage is also not fully understood. It has been theorized that there are probably other black enhancers that have not been identified that are involved in inhibiting the red pigment, and when these enhancers are not present, leakage appears. In addition to that, the amount of leakage present on a bird can really vary, but it is something that can be selected against. Ultimately, breeding birds with less or no leakage together should create birds with less or no leakage. Hens that are homozygous for E tend to be almost entirely, if not entirely, black, sometimes without additional black enhancers, but this certainly isn't always true of the males. 
Depending on the severity of the leakage, it doesn't always appear in males until they reach sexual maturity. Chicks that are homozygous for extended black tend to be black, with white or yellow on their underbelly, under their neck, and or at the end of their wings. One example of a breed and variety that is built on extended black is white-crested black Polish, as well as some Sumatras. The amount of yellow present on the chick down can vary, and sometimes as black chicks start to grow, some of the feathers on the wings will actually grow in white. However, these white feathers should molt out and regrow in as black ones as the bird matures. Any gene that dilutes or enhances black pigment can be used on a bird based on E to create a new variety. For example, blue, dun, sex-linked chocolate, recessive white, dominant white, and more could all be used to create those colors on extended black. It is important to remember that sometimes different genetic makeups can be used to create the same or similar varieties, which we will show again with our next E allele. The next E locus allele in the order of dominance is Birchin. This allele is represented with the gene symbol capital E R. Extended black and Birchin are very similar, and were actually confused for each other for a long time, because extended black chickens without black enhancers tend to get the same gold or silver leakage on the neck. In addition to that, Black enhancers can be used on Birchin-based birds to make entirely black chickens. One example of this is the black variety as found on Dutch bantams. And again, the blue, white, dun, etc. genes can be added to a black chicken based on Birchin to create blue, white, or chocolate, just like how it could be done on extended black. One main difference between the extended black and Birchin is that Birchin-based birds have very fine lacing on the ends of their feathers. Birchin males are similar to duckwing, wheaton, and partridge males, except for the fact that birchin males lack the wing triangle with femalinin, giving them the name crow wing. Females have silver or gold on their neck feathers, as well as lacing into their breast. Another difference between extended black and birchin is the chick down, and when black enhancers are present, sometimes looking in the chick down is all you can do to tell if your birds are extended black or birchin. Birchin chicks tend to be much darker, but usually have a bit of yellow fluff under their chin and a tiny amount at the end of their wings. In addition to this, laced, spangled, and penciled can be made on birchin, but the genes responsible for them do not work on extended black. The third E allele we will discuss is duckwing. Duckwing is considered to be the wild type E allele, with a gene symbol of lowercase e plus, because duckwing is the allele that we see present in red jungle fowl. Red jungle fowl hens and roosters tend to be incredibly different in plumage color, with the males being very flashy, with femalin in their hackles, saddles, shoulders, and a wing triangle formed by femalinin in the secondary flight feathers, whereas females are a muted brown, with peppering over their back and femalinin and black shafting in their neck, as well as a salmon breast. The interesting part about the salmon breast found in red jungle fowl females is that this is the autosomal red that we were talking about earlier, which is not affected by silver and gold, meaning both silver and gold duckwing hens will have the salmon breast. Duckwing chicks are characterized by a tan-colored body and a dark brown stripe down the middle of their head and back. On the back, there should be light brown strips on each side, sandwiched by another dark brown stripe. On the head, the large dark brown stripe also has darker brown stripes on each side, but no light brown stripes. And do keep in mind that chick down color is also influenced by whether the chick is silver or gold. Gold-based duckwing chicks, with the hobby name of black-breasted red, have a darker brown, almost orange color to their body, whereas silver duckwing chicks are lighter. Duckwing chicks should also have a dark outline around their eyes, trailing into a well-defined black stripe on pullets and a fuzzy or muted stripe on cockerels. Because I do not personally raise duckwings, I can't comment on the accuracy of this, although the trick has been used for many years with seemingly good results. The fourth allele we will discuss in order of dominance is Wheaton although there does seem to be an exception to it. The gene symbol for Wheaton is a lowercase e with a capital WH in the superscript. It has been established that when bred to extended black and birchin, Wheaton is recessive, but Wheaton is dominant over duckwing and partridge. However, when black enhancers are present, Wheaton becomes recessive to duckwing. Wheaton males look incredibly similar, if not identical to duckwing and partridge males. However, the hens look very different. Wheaton hens have a cream-like collar throughout their body, with a slightly darker orange on their neck and black tail feathers. And again, this cream color in yellow is also caused by autosomal red. Wheaton chicks are entirely yellow and generally have no other markings on them, making them very distinct from the other chick down types. There are many very different varieties that can be made using the Wheaton base. 
Although partridge can be used, millflor and the buff variety can both be made on wheaton, and it is said that the best buffs are made using the wheaton base as opposed to partridge. In addition to that, varieties like black-tailed buff, black-tailed red, seen in Rhode Island reds, Colombian, buff Colombian, salmon, red, and more can all be made on wheaton. The fifth and final e allele we will discuss is what we call partridge in America. However, in some countries, it is referred to as brown. It is the most recessive, so the gene symbol is a lowercase e, b. On the males, the partridge gene causes them to look nearly the same, if not identical, to the duck wing and wheaton males, with a black tail, red hackle and saddle feathers, and a red wing triangle. Partridge females are distinct from all other e allele females, although they are similar to duck wing with the main difference being that partridge females lack the salmon breast caused by autosomal red. Using the name partridge in America is actually quite confusing, because in America, there are no recognized partridge varieties that are purely partridge. Partridge, as we know it in Silkies, Plymouth Rocks, Well Summers, and Wyandots, actually includes the pattern gene. Interestingly, this pattern gene does not affect the males on the partridge based, so partridge based males still look normal. However, the pattern gene does affect the pattern on the feathers of the female. This pattern gene redistributes where the eumelanin and femelanin will appear on each feather, causing the black to form circles around the shaft or base of the feather. The pattern caused by the pattern gene on a partridge base may be referred to as penciled as well, meaning hobby name partridge and penciled are the same. To make things confusing though, the same name of penciled may also be used for birds that are based on partridge with the pattern gene, but also have DB, the dark brown gene. This all just goes to show why it is so important to know the genetics behind the patterns in the birds you are using, especially when the same hobby name is used for different genetic makeups. The partridge base can be used to make many different varieties, including partridge, single laced, double laced, penciled, spangled, and more. It can also be used to make millflor and buff, although the best buffs will typically be made using wheaton. Depending on which of the genes responsible for these varieties are present, the chick down can really vary. The chick down of the partridge chicks we see in America, which of course also have the pattern gene, tend to be very similar to duckwing, except for the fact that instead of having a well-defined stripe on their head, they have different spots and patches of dark coloring instead. And that wraps up our brief overview of the five different alleles on the E. locus. Extended black, birchen, duckwing, wheaton, and partridge. The differences between them phenotypically in males, females, and chicks, and some common varieties made on each. All in all, understanding the E. alleles can be very complex and confusing, but it's so important when creating varieties, because different genes work differently when combined with different E. alleles. For example, when you add dominant white to a bird based on extended black, you'll get a paint, but when you add it to a bird based on duck wing, you'll get red pile. Understanding which varieties are made on which E. alleles can really help advance your breeding program. For example, although their hobby names sound very different, birchen, brown red, silver blue, and lemon blue are all made on the birchen base. And although they differ on whether they are silver or gold or carrying the blue gene, with the right pairings, you can get a lot more variety in the color of the offspring and use the combined traits of all your birds in these varieties to create birds that conform to the standard. Although there are only five recognized alleles on the E. locus, they aren't the only genes responsible for the distribution of color. There are also other color distribution genes, like dark brown, Colombian, mahogany, melanotic, and dilute, as well as pattern genes, like barred, pattern gene, and mottled, all of which we'll save for another video. As always, if you ever have any questions, feel free to comment or contact me via any of the methods linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.